So um, we just need the um, UX fishbowl as the entry point. And um, Felix, if you click again, we should end at the invitation. Okay, so the fish are invited. Um, no, it's okay, I don't want the steps. Um, the, we don't need them. I just want the invitation. So you click to the next slide. Awesome, thank you. Jumps back and forth. <laughs> so what we want uh, the fish to invite, to talk about in the next couple of minutes, is um, the interesting, the stretching, the forward failing about hosting a virtual liberating structure session. So we, in the previous conversations, we heard about what works and what we learned. And we are now curious to hear a bit the behind the, do you say behind the curtain? Background, like really what you, as if you are in a bar and you said, you, Tell me what went wrong and what you learned here. What was surprising? What was, what was really hard for you? Do you get it? Okay, and uh, whoever feels like um, I want to kick off that conversation uh, starts. And um, we as observers are invited to capture some observations, notes in chat. And the challenge for you is to not observe chat. Maybe you turn off chat <coughs> completely. Um, but you can later, um, when we are um, in breakout rooms, uh, revisit and have a look again. So, but you're not talking to us, you are talking with each other, the four fish. Okay, so um, Felix, could you stop screen sharing and I stop my video? And maybe just as a reminder for everyone who is not visible, could you please go on mute? So we have all attention on the fishes. Hey, <laughs> here we are, the hosts, or the, uh, the yeah, former hosts. Yes. Ah, who's got an observation they want to kick us off with? Um, one of the observations that I want to make is we did uh, the Purple Elephant session back in, like I guess, about a, a month or five weeks ago. And one of the things that we kind of noticed as we were kind of doing it, or I guess, in the in the session and afterwards was just around making the session some of the complexity of language some of the our invitations weren't as clear as we would have liked them to have been uh, conscious that in such a multilingual crowd such a multilingual group of people there's something around you being able to simplify because certain words translate well and certain words don't translate well so there's a real learning around taking the complexity and squeezing it out and simplifying what you're looking to communicate that no matter how clever it seemed when you were designing it clever doesn't work <laughs> when you get 70 people and you're trying to make something important happen yeah no, i can understand i was actually part of that session so i, I um, i'm trying to think of some of the invitations but obviously i'm not first language english so I, i'm not uh, going to struggle with it too hopefully but uh, well, you do but uh, um yeah no i um I, I was reminded of something you said i think when we joined earlier on chat that um it seems like maybe in this virtual world that liberating structures is an essential way to do things it's not a nice to have and that is starting to mean something to me i think because it uh, it just brings it brings a depth to interaction which people aren't necessarily used to having in a virtual space and um, uh, I, i've noticed that on not just the practice sessions i've done in this group but others that i've tried um, there's something very disembodied about the standard way of communicating like each of us now here looking at a screen and we feel like we're to together but we're not really together and our bodies are we're tricked into um, our minds are tricked into thinking that we're together uh, but liberating structures helps with that because it gives us more ways to, it gives us more surface area and more depth and more uh, fast uh, uh, angles to work with uh, which um, which really helps like it makes it embodied it makes it much more 
physical experience because then when you start to bring in you know gestures and music and things that you do on the screen it really helps yeah and maybe related to that uh, something that was uh, also that connor was also mentioning uh, how even essential liberating structures can be in this remote setup i can say that i am using them all the time uh, because of something that someone told me some time ago that uh, people in a meeting are more inclined to participate during the whole week uh, meeting if they are talking at the beginning of the meeting so with uh, impromptu network or one to for all or all these liberating structures that we are talking about i think that is an amazing opportunity to uh, make everyone break these uh, barriers that uh, we have uh, in a remote setup. Yeah. yeah, that's very true. Yeah, I think um, I was just thinking about some of the stretches so that we've, the interesting things have come up, but the stretch, which obviously is often mentioned is the is the cognitive load that you suffer when you're a host and the, the the being in control of the tech and you know following the storyboard it so people can tell you that it's a bit like being a parent and not having been a parent before people say oh it's gonna be really tough it's gonna be really hard and you go ah it's not gonna be hard i'll do that and then you do it and you're like whoa like you can't until you've experienced it you don't know just how much is going on so yeah it's so it's so true um, i tried it doing it on my own once um without a co-host and it was horrible and I will never do that again. Yeah. Well, for our our practice session on the 9th of April it was a lot technical learnings at first. Like we were two that was really good and we realized, okay, with all the timings, maybe you should calculate some buffer in the breakout rooms because if you need, like people need a couple seconds longer uh, Zoom is not going to let you do that. Once programmed in the time, it's going to be the time the breakout rooms close. So that was a big learning for us. And also um, the fairly like finding the, the broadcast function, like it was a big help to, to test part of this before, but there were still things we didn't really, did, didn't really do before and they were a little surprising. And, that was one thing like the technical and i would suggest uh, everyone to try this even try this with two people and um the other thing was like how to fill this beginning time when people are arriving like you can't just be silent and stare at the camera so there should be some music or talk or chatter or welcoming people like what I've seen recently in another meeting was that the host invited to share in chat uh, what everybody is reading right now. And some things came up that were related to the topic of the meeting. Others were just personal uh, recommendations of novels. So that was something that we discovered that like how to fill the waiting times with something that doesn't feel so awkward. Yeah, and there, there's something I think really important about that. Uh, Dan, I think you used a phrase around kind of tricking us into feeling that we're connected. And there's something about the human brain is that if the human brain feels connected, then it's connected. It's, it's actually, a, it's a perception kind of thing. So finding ways for people to start to interact early, I think is really, really important that one of the beauties of the liberating structures is that it creates a structure in which people interact. So to some degree, it, I'm coming to see more and more that it's less my job to facilitate learning and discovery in terms of being specific and more just to kind of hold space and people are going to figure out what it is they need to learn, what it is they need to discover or whatever needs to happen will just happen. So I kind of see my role changing from facilitating to more holding spaces through the different structures so that people can discover what it is that's important for them. Hmm. 
And how that's much time did you starting to... death. I was oh. going to say, how much time did each of you spend preparing for the time that your um, your labs or any other recent sessions? So just, uh, I mean, I think Felix and I spent three hours, of, about three hours in in uh, co-design, and then another. I don't know. I probably sat, sat and thought about it on my own for another half an hour, an hour, maybe outside of that. So it felt like a lot of prep time, like maybe three x, three or four x, the length of the session. But I felt like it was worth it. Like we really understood what we wanted to get out of it together. It wasn't just a list of steps. For me, I can share with you that uh, yes, uh, it took uh, around these three hours. The common. Uh, script planning, let's say. For me, one of the things that took a lot of time was creating a slide uh, to share the structure in a very visible uh, way so that everyone could understand and could take this uh, as reference while they were in the breakout rooms. I was sharing the slides beforehand at the very beginning of the, of the session uh, so that they could always refer to them. And this proved uh, very useful, but it took a lot of, <laughs> a lot of time to create uh, yeah, something that uh, I was happy with and was visible enough. That's it. I think we probably spent about eight hours designing uh, for, for, for our sessions with three of us who were, who were co-leading. Uh, and that's the first time the three of us had had co-led. Um, so we, we we invested. Hello. Hey, it's me. I think you are good to continue um, talking. But um, we, while observing the chat, I think um, the rest of um, participants has also um, some uh, some things to discuss. And what we're do going to do next is. Um, you fish, you stay uh, in the main room or you get a breakout room. Um, I have to clarify with my colleagues <laughs> how we wanted to do that. And uh, the rest of us will find, uh, we will find us in uh, trios and we will elaborate a bit on what we heard from you and maybe how it maps with what we experienced as uh, people leading a session or being participants. We will do so for five minutes and then come back share with you and then you have another round with us watching you and uh maybe all participants uh, who are with us still um could you turn on your video again so that we get a feeling for the group ah here you are all and um what did he say who, who was going to do the breakout rooms is it ina again yeah and i'm here are you putting the fish into a room or are you leaving them there? Yeah, I am just not seeing any participants I can put into a breakout room. That's really interesting. Maybe you gave the host to somebody else? Mm -hmm. Was it so? I'll check. Um, yeah. I don't have the host. Yeah, it says in the list that Ina is the host. Okay. So <laughs> and it's not I cannot see who is in which breakout room. It just doesn't that's a real peculiar situation. So that's the first in in this tech situation. So if anyone had that situation, I would be very happy to get a hand. I'm or you give me the host and I see if I have the same. Yeah, that would be great. So. And um, Felix, could you put in what people are, are do going to do um, in their trio? If it's written somewhere, <laughs> I'm not sure. I can, I, can, I can do that. I can. Okay. So I'm the host. Okay. Yeah. So I see people. And um, I will put the fish together in um, in one room. Um, 
me see that I here's Ivan and there. Count. Okay, so I think I distribute uh, everyone and Ina, uh, where are you? That is interesting. Let's see what happens. Um, I don't, uh, it's really interesting. I don't see you in the participants. So maybe you hang out in the main room um, with me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, we will have um, five minutes in your trio. Uh, we have one duo and, um, and you exchange on, uh, on what you heard and uh, what else you're curious about leading a, um, a, a virtual um, meeting. Okay. You and I forgot to presume recording uh, if you... <laughs> so uh, what does Felix just said, uh, it's lost forever in our hearts. <laughs> Any more uh, fish fodder? Ina, you wanted to say something? Yeah. Um, there has been a number of things in, in the chat um, I'm observing. And one thing I heard as well was that there's a curiosity about which of the structures did you, did the fishes um, lead and maybe what felt, um, where was a real learning edge in which of the structures for you compared to offline because that's the virtual learnings and um, I also had the curiosity about okay if we assume that um, it's more and more important to hold space um, instead of facilitating so what what do you do what do you feel what's what are the important parts of that holding space and and where is your own stepping out of the comfort zone in, in doing this, in enabling that. Okay, so thank you for that fish fodder. And now we are turning off our uh, video again, and then uh, we should have a nice, uh, I love the serenity of a four, four people in a screen. And um, this is just a brief, like, let's hear what resonates from what we just said, or you pick up on something you discussed in your foursome while we were in breakouts. And then uh, we take the next step what, from, from that condensed look of yours. So I stop my video. And uh, Sven, we have a fishbowl of fish who are uh, exchanging on their uh, practice leading. And we have, we ask everybody, thank you. <laughs> Jump the video is not a fish. You're muted. I think the dynamics are so very, very different in Zoom than they were with a face-to-face -face group. That in a face-to-face -face group, there can be different conversations, but in Zoom with more than one person speaking, it breaks down. And everyone, there's that kind of halting, oh, oh no, you go, you go. Then there's those strange silences that can feel uncomfortable for people. I, Suzanne, your face says you recognize that as well. Uh, so I think there's something around letting go of some of our experience from the past and finding a new feel for working in zoom that's different yeah definitely agree with that it, i find it interesting that, the, that myself and many other people i know have been working in a virtual way for many years but we really didn't understand <laughs> how to be very good at it you know like it was it it's uh, a there's so much more than just 
turning up with the video camera on, you know, with the webcam and like being part mm -hmm. of it, you know, like uh, some of the, some of the things that Liberating Structures is helping to teach us in, in this virtual world is um, stuff that I feel like we should have known for a lot longer. Yeah, just kind of live, just live with the symptoms of the things that you talk about there, Connor, I, um, the things that don't grate and jar and feel uncomfortable were just facts of life, you know, for umpteen virtual meetings that I've been on in work situations for years. <laughs> and we never thought, ah, is there a better way of doing this? Like, why yeah. is this happening? Can we change this? <laughs> and, and I think there's even something happening right now that it's a really different experience by everyone turning off their video. Now there's just four. Um, and when everyone else comes back on, it's like, oh my God, you, you almost forget yeah. there's others around. <laughs> and in the same way as when people are maybe on phone or they've got their video turned off during the meeting, then there's a much stronger sense of disconnect. You're kind of what's going on behind that. Mm -hmm. um, so the brain's constantly looking for some form of connection. I think one of the questions was, um, what are your, I think, is it Ina Aha, saying? What, that ah. was just a, a too good, um, how to say, springboard to jump to the next step. So can I um, ask everybody to turn on their videos again? And um, in the next step, um, I will reopen um, breakout rooms. And uh, in that room, you're invited um, to harvest a bit of what you heard from everyone and from the fish in particular. So, um, and the invitation is um, briefly think about what seems to be important about hosting a virtual rating structure session. And um, you discussed that in, um, in your little group. And when you come back, uh, we will do a chatterfall um, to harvest what you talked about. Um, so let's see. I hope nobody left us since I composed those groups. I will have a look. Nobody seems to be alone. Oh, but where is a uh, breakout session for fish? Where's Susanne? I need to move. I, I forgot to move you into breakout session 11, I think, last time. Is that correct? Oh, <laughs> sorry for that. So I will um, reopen all rooms and uh, please talk about of what seems to be important. Five minutes and then we see each other back. Have fun. Oh, um, I'm curious um, what you found out. What seems to be important about hosting a virtual uh, liberating structures uh, session? And we will use our beloved Chatterfall to harvest some of the things you found out. And um, please type. Okay, die sind sich ja dann in der Gegend. Geh mal dahin. Hallo. Guck mal, dann kann ich dich anrufen dann. Ja, that was so spot on. Uh, live with the serpent circumstances. <laughs> From um, your daughter, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, if you held back, so um, finish your uh, your thought and hit enter. So.
Yeah, I want to comment on that uh, because I'm 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 feeling I'm very aware that we are recording and here's um, get comfortable with the silence. That is my biggest learning uh, edge still <laughs> to develop that uh, being comfortable. Um, okay, and uh, the last um, we thought we could take it. Um, one step further and uh, harvest um, what you took away with you. So all in all, if you have a look now at uh, all this exchange on our experience uh, hosting um, a virtual liberating structures session, what are you taking with you? And um, share what you're willing to share or comfortable to share and the rest of will probably stay with you <laughs> very well. Okay, so um, finish your thought and typing and send. We have come to an end of this um, session. Um, Ina, what was the plan? Um, can you say that? And I copy paste an uh, um, announcements. Anyone who spontaneously would say, yeah, I'd love to try and uh, jump into the into the waters of the unknown or try something out or even maybe try a structure I haven't tried before. It would be really nice. <laughs> yeah, and swim, <laughs> swim in the blue ocean. It would be nice. Either come forward now or drop us an email if you feel tomorrow, yeah, I didn't raise my hand, but if I really think about it, I would love to try. We are there to help. And this is a community to fail forward and to uh, embrace our learnings. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to point out, um, so we, we are not alone and we create this together and we are a very helpful um, community. And uh, we are standing on tall shoulders or many shoulders that together are tall. <laughs> And uh, in that uh, sense, we developed or started um, developing a virtual liberating structures community handbook. And it's uh, set up in a way that we can um, develop it further. There's a lot of structures still to be adopted by people who tried them out and want to um, be the curator of um, writing what it takes to facilitate it online. And also there is lots of events and we have a, a, a calendar where it's all aggregated and also this calendar um, is um, participatory. So you log in and you can uh, announce your own events. And as you can see, uh, if you really want to dig into liberating structures, there's lots of opportunity at the moment and possibilities.